welcome to another solid rock live we're really excited to see you here today uh, i just have one quick announcement um next week we will be going back to physical solid rock meetings on saturday um so we won't have solid rock live uh next week uh hopefully we won't need to have solid rock live anymore uh, remember we're only doing solid rock live when we don't have physical meetings on saturday but join us uh, for for solid Solid Rock Saturday at four o'clock to about six o'clock where we, we pretty much hang out for a good hour playing video games and then we have basically what we have like uh like what we have on Solid Rock Live where we basically have a mini service and, and hear a short talk and do fun games I'll have a time of worship. Yeah. So but I have a question for you guys. Do you guys remember a couple of weeks ago when when I when I somehow got people to do the bean boozled game? Well, I somehow convinced another youth and his mentor to to do the bean boozled challenge. Right? It's where you take uh, one one of these beans and it's either a good bean or a bad bean and you eat it. Uh, why don't we watch this now and see how it went? So we're going to <laughs> we're going to do the bean boozle challenge with this Kuya Ariel. Alright, so I'm going to start first. Okay, I got um either spoiled milk, spoiled oh, coconut. Yeah. Is it what is, is it this spoiled one? Spoiled milk. Is it I think it's this one, wait. Please. <laughs> yes, it's coconut. Okay. Okay, it's coconut. Me? Yeah. I like coconut. Are yeah. you yeah, no, you you fling it. Hmm. What you got? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you got. It's oh no no no! It's this one. It's either skunk or licorice. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, it's the. So mm. I've got this black bean in Dragon Ball Z. They have that magic bean. So I'm gonna try <laughs> this. I'm gonna like. Super Saiyan here. So I'm, <laughs> I'm scared. Man. Do you see? What is it? Is it skunk? Is it skunk or licorice? I'm trying to So it's licorice. Not really. <laughs> what does that mean? Not really licorice. I tasted it before. Oh. Uh, so wow. Okay, fine. I got. <laughs> <laughs> I got either dirty dishwasher or birthday cake. I think it's this one, right? Yes? Or what? Or is it this one? Oh, it's this one. <sighs> yes, okay. I'm fine again. It's birthday cake. What? I'm safe. I'm safe again. <laughs> I'm, I'm really good at this. I'm really good. I've got what's this? Stink bug. Did you see that? This one, stink bug. Oh my goodness, who made this game? <laughs> stink bug or? I'm gonna sue him. So this marshmallow. This one? This one. Yes, that one. Yes, it's similar. This one. Right. See this one? <laughs> you just open and like. <laughs> <laughs> it's the stink bug. <laughs> Man, I'm really too good at this, honestly. I'm way too good at this. Okay. Oh, I also got toasted marshmallow stink bug. So what? it is this one. That's the f last one? I don't know. Third one, fourth one. I didn't do that. There's more, there's more. Okay. That's the last one? No, there's two more here. No, what I mean? Is it the fourth bean? No, we have one more bean left. Good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I got all good things, man. I, I got all. Mm, I got all the good things. Now's the last one. For me? On me. Dark chocolate or dog food? <laughs> What? <laughs> what are you laughing Chocolate about? pudding, canned dog food. Yes. <laughs> Did you see that? You're gonna get um. Ah. 
We're gonna get canned food for sure. So what's the color? This it one? Is, is it? It's like purple. Yeah, there you go. This one. Please be bad. Please be bad. <laughs> I think it's. Okay. Ah, it's dark, cho dark chocolate. Okay, this is the last one now. Huh? Dead. What is it? Blue. It's. What do you mean blue? It's in blue. Oh, okay. So it's strawberry or dead fish. So it is. Is it this one, right? Yes. Yeah, it's this mm. one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's this one. This one. But this one. No, that one is for the barf and the peach. <laughs> it's that fish. Ew. But it's fine, I'm a Filipino, so I'm used to it. Wow. <laughs> but yeah. NGL, not gonna lie. <laughs> like, not gonna lie. <laughs> so this That's... is my last round here, so let's see what I got. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you guys pick. Chocolate again. <laughs> or can food. You can do good. I get. won. I like it. You can do. Yeah, this one. See? <laughs> See? It's that fish is more. Good challenge though. That's a good challenge, right? Mm -hmm. See? Alright, thank you. And... Bye. Bye. Peace. If you guys want to try the bean boozle challenge, come on down to the office. I have a bunch of beans in my office. You can always try it out, Ch test out your luck to see uh, if it's good or not. If you if you get the good one or you get the bad one. Uh, we are just gonna go now into a time of worship. So why don't we just prepare our hearts for that? Would you pray with me uh, before we worship our Lord and Savior today? Uh, dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you that we can come and worship you. Oh Lord, I pray that you just um, just be with us wherever we are um, in worship, Lord God. Uh, let us know that you are our provider and let us sing that out today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
We just love you. We, we thank you, Lord, for providing for us, Lord, for sustaining us, Lord, up to the real the end, Lord God, through your grace, through your love, Lord, through the cross, Lord, you do so much for us, Lord God, to the point of bringing us eternal life. I pray that you would just be upon us today, Lord, as we hear your word, as we hear how you provide for us today. Please open our hearts and minds to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey guys, so we are going to be in John chapter 6, starting at verse 1 to 15. I'll just give you guys a moment to get your Bibles. Again, it's John chapter 6, starting at verse 1 to 15. I'll read that for us today. After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, or Tiberias. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs which he was performing on those who were sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was near. 
Therefore, Jesus, lifting up his eyes and seeing that a large crowd was coming to him, said to Philip, What are we to buy? Where are we to buy bread so that these may eat? This he was saying to test him, for he himself knew what he was intending to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, for every one to receive a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here that has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are these for so many people? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in place, so the five, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. Jesus then took the loaves, and having given thanks, he distributed to those who were seated, likewise also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, so that nothing will be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragrance from five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Therefore, when the people saw the sign which, had, which he had performed, they said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. So Jesus, pursue, perceiving that they were intending to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew again to the mountain by himself alone. You would keep your Bibles open to that, um, to that part of the Bible. Uh, we we've been learning really through the Gospel of John. We've been learning that Jesus reveals Himself to us, right? Well, that's that's one of the themes of of of, of John, right? It really, God, re Jesus revealing Himself to us as God, right? We learned that He became flesh, right? We learned about the amazing miracles that he, uh, that he had, right? We learned that he is the, the, the living spirit that gives us new birth, right? We learned that he was the living water that gives us life. And last week we learned, right? Jesus literally claimed to be God, that he claimed that he was God, See, today, through this really familiar story that, that everyone has heard, I've heard this since I was, I was in Sunday school myself, we learn through, through the feeding of the 5,000 that Jesus is our provider. But see, he's not just providing us with, with things that we need in this world. He provides for us even more than we can even imagine. Jesus is our provider. There are two things that, that we see from this passage that, that, that relate to that. See, if Jesus is our provider, the first thing we need to do is we need to turn to God when we need help. We turn to God when we need help. If Jesus really, if we really believe that Jesus can provide for us, would we not go to him when we need something? And so we see this in the first, first nine verses um, of, the, of the story, of this passage. See, in the first three, four verses, right, we, we see Jesus there, and they had just healed all these people. They had just done all these this ministry, right, that they were healing people, they were preaching, right, they were teaching, right. Uh, it's it's kind of like, I don't know about you, but on Sunday after church, I am so tired from all the ministry that I'm doing, from all, all the work that I'm doing. And the moment I get home, I just, I just take a nap, <laughs> Right? Anyone who knows me knows that I take my Sunday nap, right? And, and, and here, right, the disciples and Jesus just want to rest. They're tired. They've done all this ministry. They've been healing people. They were teaching people, you know, the word. And they just want to rest. But what happens? 
there is this crowd of people that start coming to them. It's like this groupie, right? You know how band members have these groupies, these crowd of people that follow them everywhere, right? They have these groupies, this huge crowd following him, them, and Jesus starts to teach them. We, 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 we learn in the story of Mark, in Mark's account, and then Jesus looks at these people and, 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 he, and he uses this opportunity to test his disciples. Right, look with me in verse 5 to 6. Therefore Jesus, lifting up his eyes and seeing the large crowd was coming to him, said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these may eat? This he was saying to test him, for he himself knew what he was intending to do. See, Jesus knew exactly. Jesus knew he was going to feed these people. Jesus knew he was going to perform this amazing miracle before it happened, of course, because he's God. But see, he used this opportunity to see if his disciples would pick up on that. Remember here, he these disciples had been with him all all the time where they had seen him do all these miracles right they, they had seen him seen all the conversations and the teachings that he had done and they had just heard jesus claimed to be god and they believed him and wouldn't you think when when this ama when this huge problem arose them knowing that they are literally in the presence of God, that they would ask him as God to do something. Let's see what the what the disciples do. Verse 7, Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, for everyone to receive even a little. Right, Philip, I imagine him being there, right, calculating in his head, probably taking on his calculator. Mm, um, you know, there's this many people, you know, we could probably cost this amount, right, of money. Right, one, one din, din, uh, one, um, yeah, one denarii, what was, um, denarius, actually, uh, was, was one, one, la one day's worth of labor, right? So, so 200 was really eight months worth of work, right? So if you would work for eight months, right, whatever job you had, that's how much it would cost. That's how much it would cost. And he said, even that wouldn't be able to feed all of these people. See, Philip was looking to the world to solve the problem. He was working, he was working it out in a worldly manner. And then you have the next one, you have Andrew come up and he has a little more faith, right? And, and we're saying one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a lad here is five barley loaves and two fish. But what are these for so many people? But he finds this kid, right, who has these five loaves of bread. And it's not actually the loaves that we're thinking, right? He specifically is barley loaves, really focusing on, on, on this. It's really from a poor kid. But these barley loaves are barely unleavened bread. It's like I, if I gave you five saltine crackers and two tiny, like, little sardine fishes, right, to eat for lunch. And he finds his kid and he brings his kid. This is all we have. This is definitely not going to be able to feed all these people. The disciples who were watching Jesus do all these things, who knew that Jesus was God, they didn't think to turn to Jesus when they were faced with this impossible problem, this impossible task right my question for you is are you like the disciples when an impossible task comes towards you when a huge problem arises when 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 struggles happen who is the first person you go to for help is it yourself? Is it your parents? Is it the things of this world? Is it logic from this world? Or is it God? 
right? It's the first person you turn to God to help you. When you have a huge test, when you are failing in class, when you get hurt. How about when you're depressed, alone, afraid? When you feel like nothing is going right, when the world, when you feel the world is coming to an end. When it's brought about by, by heartache, maybe you got, maybe you broke up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Maybe you lost someone close to you. Maybe you feel like the world is being unfair to you. Who is the first person you go to in this time of need? Is it God? One of my favorite teachers, I remember him telling us a story and he he struggled providing for his family once right they, they were there was this huge snowstorm he was he was in this house and he couldn't go out to go buy food and he was so devastated he was scared that he wouldn't be able to feed his three children and his wife and out of desperation he prayed to God and all of a sudden he hears this doorbell, right? He hears a doorbell, right? He, again, he's snowed in, right? Like, he, like he's like, you know, basically it's, you know, it's all full of snow. You can't get out. You can't go anywhere and nothing is open and he's afraid he can't. And, and he hears the doorbell and he goes to the door and he opens it and there is a basket of food. And as he's looking out, you know what he doesn't see? doesn't see any footsteps whatsoever see God provided him with that in that desperation in that time of need when he was facing this big problem he went to God we know that when we believe that Jesus Jesus is our provider, we first turn to him in our time of need. And the second thing is that Jesus provides in abundance what we need. He provides for us in abundance. We see this in verses 10 through 11. Uh, look with me, right? Jesus, right, takes, the, right, he, he, he tells the disciples, have the people sit down, verse 10, right, and, and, and everyone sat down, and this is where he, he, they tell you how many people are there, they counted 5,000 men, right, there, there are a lot of reasons why they, they only counted the men, uh, and one of them I'll tell you about a little bit later, but really, when they say 5,000 men, that doesn't mean 5,000 people, okay? Each one of these men are probably there with their wives, right? Beware, I am going to do some math, right? So if that's 5,000 and everyone has a, uh, has, has a wife, so then that's probably what, that's 10,000 people. And in fact, actually, they were probably there with their family. So if each one of these people have a child, let's just say one, that's 15,000 people. And actually, most people probably had more than one child, either two or three. So let's just say that's approximately 15,000 to 20,000 people that Jesus is about to provide to provide for in abundance and Jesus takes these five saltine crackers and two fish and what does he do he starts just passing it out Right, he started passing out full loads full pieces of fish so much so that what that uh, verse 11, Jesus took the loaves, having dis given thanks, he distributed those who were seated and likewise those the fish as much as they wanted. They were satisfied. They ate as much as they possibly could until they were satisfied, as they were done. And afterwards, right, all the disciples, everyone gathered all the leftovers that were there. And how many baskets do you know? were full of bread there were 12 
See, this is significant, right? This is significant because, right, they're bringing, it's bringing them back to a time, right, in the desert, right, the story of desert, and, and, and Moses giving them, right, what, what in the desert? Manna, right? The bread that fell from the, from the sky, right? And, and they bread, but see, this bread only would last them one day. There were 12 baskets. Do you know how many tribes there are? There are 12. See, this is important because really this symbolizes, right? Numbers are really important. It symbolized that Jesus was going to provide for, in abundance, for the, the 12 tribes of Israel. It was always going to be like that. Right, it, 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 these promises in Jeremiah right talks about this right where 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 God would provide for them. See, and and there this see all of this is coming back to them. Right, realizing that Jesus is it has done this miraculous sign. They'd seen it in front of their eyes. And verse fourteen, therefore, when the people saw the sign which he had performed, they said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. See, they're quoting their Deuteronomy when Moses is there telling them about, about this greater prophet than him that is going to come. He was talking about Jesus who was going to save them. Right? And many, many people took this, this passage as, as talking about the Messiah that was going to be this king that was going to bring all, take away all the pain and the suffering and everything. And see, the reason why John and the, and, and the disciples quote the men is because many of, of, of the Jewish people thought that this king was going to liberate them from the Roman Empire. They were going to stop them from that, from, from being oppressed by the Romans. And they were ready to take up their swords. See, Jesus, knowing this, knowing that that is what the people are thinking. Verse 15. Jesus, so perceiving that they're intending to take him by force to make him king, withdrew again to the mountain by himself alone. See, the reason why Jesus withdraws, the reason why Jesus goes away is because he knows he's going to provide for them in a different way than they want, that they think that they need. They think they need a king that's going to liberate them from the Roman Empire. But see, Jesus knows that he is going to be the king that provides them eternal life, that provides for them an eternal life that gets away their liberation, that liberates them from their sin. And not only is he going to do that for the Jews, but it's going to spill over and it's going to be for the whole world, for all the Gentiles, for you and me. And he does that on the cross by going on the cross and dying for our sins and raising to life after three days so that we could raise, be raised with him. Jesus provides in abundance, not only for our physical needs on this earth, but for our spiritual needs to the point of eternal life. If you're sitting at home today and you're thinking, and you're thinking, I want that eternal life. I've heard the gospel before, but, but, but today I really heard it. If that is you today, I would love to talk to you about that. Or maybe your parents or, or, or a Christian friend. We, we would love to talk to you about what it means to follow Jesus, to ask him dear, to take away your sin and to follow him and, take, and have eternal life. Maybe you are a believer. Maybe you've come to Jesus asking him for what, what, you, what, what you want or what you think you need. 
and you felt like that God is not giving you the answer, like God isn't giving you the answer what you need, giving you the thing that you want. But maybe he has actually already given you the thing that you need and he's given to you in abundance. Not only eternal life, but for the little things on earth today. I remember when I was in high school, for some reason, um, a, a lot of people that were kind of outcasts were, were drawn to me. And I remember there was this particular girl who was just really annoying. And she would follow me all the time, right, right, you know, for some reason and it was really annoying and I remember praying to God God could you just make this person get away from me right that is definitely what I thought I needed it's definitely what I wanted but you know what God did he provided for me in abundance and instead of making this person go away from me do you know what he gave me that was greater he gave me patience Right, he gave me love for this person. Right, he, he gave me empathy. And today, I don't think I could work with youth. I don't think I could work with the people that I work with. I don't think I could mentor people if I wasn't given those gifts of love, patience, and empathy that I learned when I was in high school. See, Jesus, when he provides for us, he provides an abundance, but he provides abundance of the things that we need and not what we want. Jesus is our ultimate provider. Where we learn from the story today that he doesn't only provide for us the physical needs, but he does for our spiritual needs as well. I want you to take a moment right now and think, what is hindering you right now? What is burdening, burdening you right now? It can be something big and it can be something small. Maybe you're being bullied at school. Maybe, maybe you're being teased. Maybe you feel like you're, you're all alone. Maybe, maybe you feel like everyone is, is weighing down on you or the pressure from your parents is weighing down on you. Whatever it is, I, I ask you to think about that today and lay it at the feet of, of Jesus, the one who provides for us. Give it to God. Turn to him today and give it to God because Jesus is our provider. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you we can come and learn, Lord, how you provide for us, not just the things, that the not just the physical needs that we have, but the spiritual needs that we have. Lord, I pray that as we go out, people would see that we are people that trust you, that love you, that go to you when there is, a, when there are problems, when we have troubles. Lord, we, 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 I pray that we will be a people that believe that you will provide for us in any way that we need. Lord, I pray that we will be people that would look out, that we would look for you, that, that we would look towards you, Lord, in, in the times of need and trouble. That we would look towards the cross when, 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 when we are down. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us for Solid Rock Live. We are going to be on Zoom right after this for really prayer and discussions. If you had any questions about what you heard, or if you have something you want to pray about, um, please do join us. Uh, yeah. If not, I will see you next week uh, at, at Solid Rock um at the church center physically we will be social distanced um inside the actual center itself but please come and join us but until then i will see you next time